Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 23rd September 2016. The first article is related to India-Pakistan relations and uh, India's response to the Pakistan Prime Minister's speech at the UN General Assembly. Now most of the speech of the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is focused on the Kashmir and the recent violence in Kashmir. In his speech he also hailed Mr. Burhan Wani as the young leader and he called the Kashmiri violence as um, intifada, it means an uprising. So in these circumstances India has given a befitting reply to the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. So Ms. Suhasni Haider analyzes the India-Pakistan relationships and what is exactly missing from side of India. Now from Udhampur to today's, uh, there are many attacks on Indian military bases by the Pakistani terrorists. But India did not show a consistent reaction to all these terror attacks. So it has no consistent stand on dialogue process and also on to the reaction to the terror attacks on its uh, military bases. And even it has allowed the Pak intelligence agencies to visit its military base. So in this scenario, let us see certain um, challenges before India. The first thing is, India is not only confusing itself, but also confusing the entire international community with regard to its responses. Now initially, when the Pakistani High Commissioner to India wanted to meet a Horiath conference leaders, the, India suspended the talks with the Pakistan. And later India has resumed and allowed the Pakistani High Commissioner to meet the Horiath leaders. And after that there is a surprise talk at the foreign secretary's levels and then NSG level. And the Prime Minister has made a surprise visit. And Sushma Swaraj has also made a visit to the Pakistan. And the dialogue process was reinitiated. So, in this scenario, again, the suspension of the dialogue process, if it is going to happen, or if it has, uh, between the NSGs is going on as of now at the foreign secretary level, it has been stopped. If again at the NSG level it is being stopped, it is more like um, hop in and hop out of the hop out of process, um, which is going to make the international community to believe that India do not have proper stand on the Pakistan or proper doctrine against the Pakistan. And uh, this is going to demean the India status and argument across the world. And the second thing is, uh, if you are uh, responding to Pakistan on the international forums about Kashmir, Obviously, the very purpose of the Kashmir is getting uh, uh, served over here, that is to internationalize them. The very purpose of the Pakistan is getting served as it is trying to internationalize the Kashmir issue. And another thing is, as the issue has been brought to the other countries between now, uh, for the France, US, etc., if we carefully observe the responses, so the both the countries together, they have to solve the issue. And... It means that they are trying to equate India with the Pakistan. So, it means as Pakistan is a perpetrator of the terrorism, India being a victim, they instead that they are seeing both of them as having a responsibility to solve the issue. So, there is a hyphenation which is going on and strengthening between India and Pakistan. As India is also raising the Balochistan issue, this hyphenation is going to strengthen further. So India need to be cautious about this. Getting railways on track. So in 1924, Eckworth Committee for the first time separated the railway budget and presented a separate railway budget. The reason over there is the entire government of India budget if kept aside in railways budget on the other side, the railways budget is much higher than government of India's budget. Why this is so? The, at the point of time, the major expenditure is on the railways. Now, as railways is a commercial entity and government is an investor in the railways, the railways is expected to pay dividends to the government. So because of this, as a commercial entity, it needs to be treated as a separate budget. That's why it got uh, separated from general budget. But today, if we observe the situation, now the total railway budget is... Uh, one sixth less than one sixth of the total general budget and the second is the railway budget is a grand showing of the railway minister and most of the cases it is used for populistic vote bank politics 
when a railway minister belongs to Bihar, most of the projects go to the Bihar and minister comes from uh, West Bengal, they go to the West Bengal. And also among the coalition partners, there is always a grand bargaining for the railway portfolio to shift the projects towards uh, their particular constituencies and the states. So it means that um, the railway projects are more determined by the preferences of the railway minister rather than the objective criteria of their viability and vitality. So in this context, um, the railways are facing, are about to face huge losses. Uh, and uh, for the electoral considerations, um, the passenger tariffs are not revised for the last two decades. Uh, and because of this, the budget, uh, the burden is getting shifted onto the uh, freight. Um, and much of the freight uh, is getting shifted away from the railways as because shifting of the freight through railways has become too expensive now. So, we are now in a reform phase in railways. Uh, we are trying to bring in speed trains, we are trying to bring in delicate freight corridors. So in these circumstances, a rational objective-based management is necessary for the railways. So the politicization or political involvement can further worsen the functioning of the railways. Bibek Debray committee also has clearly stated that the revising the accounting practices, closing the separate railway budget, and providing for a modern accounting practices, these are required for railways immediately. So in line, this is in line with that. So, but however, the opposition criticizes that it is a first step towards the privatization. But the railways maintain their independence even in the common budget. But however, previously a detailed policy analysis of the railways was made. Now, no such a policy analysis and also the the performance of the railways be made because it is also a part of the version of the general budget now. That is one drawback which we see. Coming to the Rafale fighter jets. So these are the modern fighter jets India is getting from France in a flyby condition. As you know that um, India needs 42 fighter squadrons as of now we have only 33. So it means there is an urgent need for these particular fighters for India. And added to that, the best part of this fighter jet C is 50% is on the offset clause. It means that 50% of this fighter jets, uh, cost of the fighter jets, some value has to be added within uh, India. It means some part of the manufacturing or some part of the assembly, they shall, it shall happen in India. And also, France will maintain the necessary logistics and maintenance um, so that the 75% of the fighters will always be airworthy. And the missiles which it carry, they have uh, visual, beyond visual range, meteor air-to-air -air missiles. So, they have a range of up to 150 kilometers. It means that um, these missiles can be fired without crossing our uh, boundary with Pakistan if we want to take an attack on them tomorrow. So, and it is the largest defense deal of India till date. Now, coming to Afghanistan, uh, sorry, Africa. Now, if you take the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of uh, different countries, Africa has um, the greatest targets to achieve. In this case, Population Reference Bureau of Washington, D.C., it has given the estimates of the population of the world uh, by 2015. So, the largest per capita growth of the population is expected to be in uh, Africa. Now, as of now, if you've seen the population density, are the resources utilized by the African, they are very less. So the relative space occupied by the Africans in the growth, pro, in the growth benefits of this world is very less. So in these circumstances, so this growth of the population shall not be seen as a danger to the so world, the, the Afri, Africa's growth of population. So. Today, there is a worry expressed and contraceptives need to be promoted in Africa, a campaign is growing on. What the author says is, if contraceptives have to be used, these are for the choice, the rights and health of the women in Africa. These contraceptives shall, criteria shall not be purely for population control, because Africans did not get their due till date from the world, and it is the time they receive their due of the resources on this earth. Now, coming to something to everyone, the GST Council, it has been established, but 
It has a gigantic task before it. The reason is this. It has, India is a too diverse and economic country. If you observe the Maharashtra, the richest state on one side, on the other side the Sikkim, and you have Tamil Nadu and Bihar, it means there is a wide range of variability, economic pluralism in this country. We need to bring in a common tax framework for all these states together that itself is the greatest task before the GST Council. Now if you take the GST, what is agreed is on the revenue neutral rate. It means a rate at which no state will be at the loss. So achieving this revenue neutral rate is not very easy. So if we want to reach obviously the GST rate is going to be high. As the GST rate increases, the tax evasion will also increase and the people will not be ready to accept the GST transformation as they have to shed more money out of their pockets. And many of them argue that the higher GST rate will not attract or will not punish the poor. The reason being is many of the goods used by the poor are, will be excluded from the GST rates. Now if you observe, so we cannot classify or we don't have a common set of the goods which are said to be used only by the poor. So the different sets of the goods are used by the poor people in different states. So in this context, achieving a common set of the goods of the poor is not possible and higher GST rates one way or the other way is going to affect them. And in these circumstances what the author suggests is in the place of the revenue neutral rate, so a minimum assured revenue has to be given to every state. And if any state falls short of this assured minimum revenue, the center has to compensate them. And center has to be, have necessary fiscal flexibility for time being for the same purpose. And the second thing is, for better compliance, the GST rate shall be around 15%, which is the highest service tax rate as of now. And the third thing is, the exemptions. As of now, petroleum and alcohol products are exempted from GST purview. Now, it has to be limited to these things and cannot be exempted further. And finally, the states shall be incentivized for the better GST collection. So, these are the various things which are being recommended by the author. Thank you very much. All the best.